All right, here we go. Can everyone hear me fine? Jukes, what's your real opinion on cat girls? Half cat, half girls? I don't know, they exist. Um, so we're going to be doing some DOS stuff today. Um, bit of a backstory. A while ago, in the before times, I streamed DOS, DOS programming. And, uh, things happened. And now it's time to get back to that. So I went through my old files in which I now call DOS garbage fire because I can't actually get this to network properly. Like, um, I have a DOS box thing and that kind of runs DOS box. Like, I don't know, is it broken now? It might be. Um, and then it has this slurp program, which is supposed to actually network it. And I'm just staring at this and it's like TCP listen one, two, three, four, bind, fork. So that I don't actually understand how to connect this to DOSBox and it's, I haven't written it down. And it makes no sense. And so last night I spent six hours working on some code. Um, let's open it up with Pluma that would send and receive packets in user space. And today I'm going to try and slam this into DOSBox so we can have easy networking in DOSBox. Um, but first let's get a test environment. You can see I have this folder called, like, it's called DOS garbage fire. Um, and that's pretty much because I just don't want to deal with it anymore. So we're going to start over. So I'll show you how to set up DOSBox today. So let's start with the hard drive for DOSBox. I'm going to use a four gigabyte hard drive. So we're going to go DDIF dev zero, remove for piracy. <laughs> yeah. It, I wrote in my code removed for piracy instead of removed for privacy. It was a joke. Um, and we're going to make a file called drive C dot image. And we're going to set the block size to, I guess, eight megabytes. And then we're going to set the actual count to be the size of our drive divided by eight in megabytes. So I want a one gigabyte drive. Um, which should be enough for DOS. So we're just going to do 1024 divided by eight. And so it's going to create a little image. Now we're going to use F disk on the image because for some reason, free DOS just can't handle this. User S bin drive C. The counts are racist. I don't get it. Um, so we're gonna now we're in that we're in F, we're in F disk. We're gonna type O for a new DOSC disk label. We're gonna type in um, N. Uh, then select primary partition type, which is P. They've got the echoes. No, that's three parentheses, I think. Partition number one, first sector default, last sector default. And we're going to set the type to C, which is Windows 95 FAT32 LBA. It's important to have it have logical block um, addressing, otherwise DOS just can't handle it, free DOS at least. And then we're going to write that. Now we're going to grab my DOSBox config that I made over here. And we're also gonna grab the USB version of FreeDOS 13. This is the one that you actually download and put on your computer. So for DOSBox config, we're actually gonna ignore all the auto exit stuff real quick, cause that's just junk from testing. Uh, we're going to use, um, 
STL output equals OpenGL, render aspect equals true, so we get fixed aspect ratio. Um, the important thing for using FreeDOS in DOSBox is to set core equals normal. And I'll explain why that is. So let's open up DOSBox. I have my DOSBox in DOSBox X. Install bin DOSBox X and we'll write dash conf and then we'll put the file name of our configuration file and then we'll just resize it so it's full screen now. So we're going to do mount y dot as in like the local directory then we're going to go y drive. So the thing with DOSBox is that not only does it emulate a CPU, it emulates DOS, which is why it can interact with things on your hard drive. But for my purposes, I just want to emulate a CPU and run free DOS on top of it. So what we're going to do is check the directory here using do, and then we're going to do image mount um, two, freedos13 full.image and that will detect the size and mount it as my first hard drive oh no I forgot to put dash l c on it to set it as the c drive so let's unmount it by doing image mount dash u2 and then mount it again with the dash l c flag to set it as our c drive and then we're going to do image mount two drive C dot image L D drive. Oops, I don't know how I messed that up there. And you'll notice that I actually have, the, uh, I typed in D drive by accident for that. Okay, image mount three drive C image L. Oh no, that was right. Okay, I just confused myself. So we have FreeDOS 13 full as our C drive and then our drive C as our D drive. And the reason this is, is that that's just what FreeDOS needs for its installer. When it's time to actually boot from the hard drive, we'll switch them back around. So let's do boot C drive. And it will find and detect the disks. Um, and boot itself. Select our preferred language, English. Do I want to proceed? Yes. And it says drive D does not appear to be formatted. Can it the network play crisis? No. Please erase and format drives D. E. Yes, we want that. D is our C drive, remember. It successfully formats it as FAT32, which is what we want. And now we want to install the base DOS system. Oh, US English keyboard layout. Plain DOS system, please. Yes, install FreeDOS 1.3. So it said preparing for installation and now it's installing software packages. So while we're doing that, let's dive into the DOSBox source code. The current official way DOSBox X does networking is, I'll have to quickly get check out the um, NE2000 stuff because that's the actual network adapter it used. In stock, is, is this stock DOSBox functionality as in, are you supposed to do this or are you supposed to use it as a game emulator? Um, I don't know, this is kind of stock DOSBox X functionality where you're supposed to do this, but not stock DOSBox functionality. DOSBox X is more focused as emulating, but DOSBox regular um, focuses on just running DOS games. Like it's possible, but should you do it? I mean, I guess. 
So let's look at the DOSBox X networking source code. CD source hardware. Oops. I'm already in the source directory. CD hardware. So the networking actually happens in any 2000, the network adapter, which is a emulated any 2000 network adapter. So if we open up DOSBox X's configuration menu, and we look at any 2000, you can see that I can enable it. It gives a base and IRQ and it has an option called real neck. And if I click help on that, it says, specifies which of your network interfaces is used. Write list here to see the list of devices in the status window, then make your choice and put either the interface number to or something or part of your adapter's name, e.g. via here. So the trick that DOSBox uses currently to do networking is to monitor your ethernet um, device and inject and read packets, which requires root access and custom drivers. Um, and I don't want that. So let's see if we can kind of untangle this mess of code and remove the PCAP stuff, or at least comment it out for now and add slurp, which can run in user space and do the same kind of thing. That's how QMU um, does user space networking, for example. So let's have a look. I like how you can straight up develop for an abandoned system from decades ago. Very wholesome. Yeah. Let's see. I don't understand most of this code, but for my purposes, I only need to understand the PCAP stuff. Um, I don't know if I have, if it actually compiled with PCAP stuff. It might not have. Um, but I might just run the du command and see if it did because that's the first thing no it doesn't seem to uh have actually compiled the driver so let's see how we actually compile this with the driver we're going to do build dash debug help and this should give us the build options Okay, OBS, you know what? I should really prioritize things a little better, especially if I'm gonna um, use a shell to do this. Hang on a second. There we go. That should be a bit easier on the CPU by setting the priority to low and using nice. So we're gonna run that help function. We're also gonna check in on DOSBox X there. 72% installed, that's not too bad. And we are going to wait. Waiting is part of the process. Let's actually hit up our DOSBox X configuration and undo the stuff I removed. So when starting DOSBox, we want to do four things. We want to mount um, the Y directory as, I guess, home, jukia, desktop, DOS junk. We want to then um, mount drive, Im uh, we want to do image mount to Y drive, drive C, dot image um, space dash LC, then image mount three, Y drive FD 13 full, um, dash LD, and then boot C. And that should give us our drive C as the first drive on DOSBox drive C. And then image mount, um, sorry, no, should give us the free DOS 13 USB as the second disk image on drive D and then boot C drive. Hey, Yuma, you two, what's up? Did 
did my computer just crash something? How much RAM am I using? It better not be too much RAM. Nope, just one gig. So I'm actually guessing that um, the build debug program doesn't actually run configure and show us the options that I can use. So we're gonna do configure help. Oops, nice configure help. And then we're gonna look at the configure options for DOSBox's build. And we want to find anything about the NE2000. It doesn't look like there's anything to do with that. That's not good. But we will continue and just build it. Um, and then, now we won't build it yet. We'll have a look at why it's not compiling the any 2000 network card. Hi, lying on bed, gonna sleep soon. Is this the nerdy stuff you're streaming? Yep. It's a whole bunch of nerdy computer stuff. Hmm, so any 2000. It looks like it should compile. However, if we go into the any 2000 file, we should see if C underscore any 2000 and that loads from a config.h. So let's see what defines that. Configure.ac tells us that feature AC template C underscore any 2000. Um, okay, so that's a little bit weird. I don't quite understand how that works. Um, it says define one to enable any 2000 Ethernet pass through requires lib pcap. Um, and so what it seems to do is define it if I have libpcap installed. So what we're going to do, hmm. We're going to just comment that out. And we're going to define it anyway, but with slurp. So we're gonna use, we're just gonna unconditionally add libs L slurp without looking for it yet. Where in Australia am I from? I'm from like um, the border area between New South Wales and Queensland. So we're gonna define C any 2000 and C any 2000 slurp. And then we're gonna add slurp as the library. Okay, so let's configure that and we're going to set our prefix properly because I have it installed to the current directory but in the install directory. And let's see if it will now kind of enable the any 2000 but with a special define called slurp. See any 2000 slurp. Oh, our DOS box install is complete. So let's return to DOS and run shutdown. Please. Shut down. Aha, uh -huh, so it's not near Brisbane. No, Brisbane's pretty far away. We're just gonna check our config.h. And it does define any 2000, I think. No, it doesn't. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to DOSBox, edit our config as we did before, and then try and run it. And see if it boots us into our DOS install. As you can see, it says load free DOS with Jamex, no EMS. 
max RAM free. And it actually loads the free DOS kernel, detects our fake DVD drive, and loads the system into 10K of conventional memory and everything else is in upper memory. So we have 630K free of memory. Jukes, Australian English is wrong. Brisbane should be said Brisbane. No, don't do that. So we have a fairly basic DOS install. Um, it can't do much at the moment, but it can edit files. That's pretty good. And it's DOS. So that takes way too much to figure out to do but I've explained it here. So now we have a kind of stable um, example here. Oops, that makes a sound and I don't like it. So I'm gonna mute it. Um, what we're gonna install, we're gonna use FD Impulse. You wonder how I look like? I think there's a video of me on Diode Zone, which I uploaded when my computer crashed. I'll have to send it to you. Um, we're going to install the CryWarner uh, networking package. Um, STools. I'm not sure if we need FDNet. We're going to get um, links, MTCP, um, what TCP. And we're also going to look for um, does this have a search feature? I'm looking particularly for um, the Fredos shell. I don't know if they've included here, but let's have a check. Um, it might be DOS zip. Yeah, let's get DOS zip and we'll get um, FD shell as well. So let's install those. And as you can see, it's installing from the FreeDOS 13 full image without grabbing anything from the internet. And that's pretty good. Although you can use FDN package once we have networking. So let's go back to this configuration hell. Oh, why did I say that? Hang on, let me write this down so I can edit it out and There we go, 12.35. That's a bit behind the scenes. That's my thing now. I'm tired of editing videos and watching them again. So I'm just gonna write down when I say bad words. There. And that's gonna make no sense to anyone watching this on like Diet Zone. But you know what? That's, that's just my punishment. Okay, config.h. So it didn't define any 2000. Oh, I didn't run auto reconf. That's why. There we go. So we'll wait for that to complete. Okay, so it says missing template C any 2000. Um, I don't know what that means. It wants that template. Um, so let's have another quick look at what's going on. Do I need to just set that there? Do I need to set the AC template command? This is possibly the first time in my life I've actually tried to edit an auto, auto tools um, configuration file. Missing template, see any 2000 slurps. So let's just copy and paste that. Um, the GNU auto tools way of building stuff is possibly the most reliable I've seen, but also the hardest to actually set up. So let's make it now. Let's configure it and then check if it sets the configures. 
Why are you taking so long to install Lynx DOS? Oh, you just did, as I said that. I also have it set to low priority, so I should probably give it a little bit of a break. So let's see. I think we've enabled the NE2000. Let's check the config. Yup. Now let's make it. Oops, that should be J2. So while we're making that, we're going, did I go enable debug? Hang on. Does this have the debug flag set? Oh, I didn't set the prefix either. Okay, oh, wait, no, I did. Enable debug. There we go. Wow, I thought I'd be a bit more prepared to uh, compile stuff like that. So back in DOS land, we have our shell installed, free DOS shell. Oh no, it's just called DOS shell. Um, I guess it's named after the DOS program. Let's see, so now we can explore the um, computer. Let's see options. Let's change the colors. Oh, there's no presets. It's just that this is a bit gray. I don't like that. Um, oh, I'm getting really confused with these key bindings. Can I use a mouse? Hang on. No, this program doesn't support mouses. That's okay. Trash colors, a little bit. Okay, just cancel, please. Um, the one I actually tend to like is DOS zip. And as you can see, it actually shows all the files. Um, not that the free DOS shell didn't show all the files, but this just lets me have a quick two pane overview of things. So in our C drive directory, we have a few different programs like links. MTCP, what TCP, and the kernel. And then uh, in the FreeDOS directory, we have all of our programs in bin, I guess. Which is pretty good. Uh, do we have some documentation? I believe so. And we have drivers. We have some, uh, um, what would you call them? network drivers here, which we will be using a bit later. So it's a fairly minimal um, DOS install. HJort, please don't. Please don't. Oh, how do you exit? F10? Yes. Wait, are you still compiling DOSBox? All right, so we're gonna dig into the DOSBox code now. Sorry, DOSBox, not DOSBox code. Um, because it's gonna crash compiling because it doesn't have PCAP. So we're gonna have to start removing PCAP functionality and then see if DOSBox will somewhat run without it. So let's go to the DOSBox directory and we're just gonna stub things out a little bit. So source hardware, edit the any 2000 file. It's already being edited. So we're just gonna quickly close it, which was already running. It was running in my make terminal. So let's see, let's find all the PCAP stuff and we're going to do I don't know how exactly we're gonna remove it, but let's just do if zero at the moment. That seems like a solid way to handle it. 
So that removes the include files for PCAP. Um, what else? Where's our other PCAP usage? Um, where it goes to send the packet, we're just actually going to print that we sent the packet. Sent packet, and then we're going to write length. I think my modem is dying like usual because I'm buffering every second, quite depressing, that's okay. Um, so we're going to just write how much we would have sent. And then we're going to find the other PCAP stuff. Um, the, the polar here does a lot of different and interesting stuff, but we're just going to write end if there. We're not going to log it whenever it um, runs that because that's a whole bunch of stuff. It happens very often. Once again, we're going to F zero out this stuff to set up PCAP. That's the Windows stuff. Um, we're gonna F out um, F zero, the whole part where it finds out which device to use based on PCAP. Um, and then open it. So we're going to end if that, that is quite a lot of code. Um, then we're going to if out the part where it closes the PCAP device. And that looks to be, it. there's the part at the top of the file where it um, sets up the PCAP device stuff and does some workarounds for Windows. Then there's the part where it sends a packet. Then there's a part where it polls to check if there's a new packet. Then there's the part that sets it up for Windows. And then there's the part that sets it up for both operating systems by attaching to a device. And so hopefully by removing all those parts, we should be able to um, get a non-functional network card. And that would mean that we could send packets, but not receive them. And when we send them, we would get a message about it being logged. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to configuration, any 2000, and we're just going to click enable. And we're also going to go to, I want to go to I'll look at that in a second. I wanted to get rid of that um, to mute all the sound. So what we're gonna do is save that as a new configuration file and shut down this DOS box. It takes a little bit to shut down. I guess that's, you know, syncing the disk so I don't lose files, which is important, especially on a file system like FAT. We're gonna check out our saved DOS box file, uh, DOS box, yeah. DOSBox configuration file. And then we're going to go back to our regular one and just selectively copy stuff across that we care about. So we're gonna add the any 2000 section. Um, and we're going to enable any 2000 equals true. We'll actually just copy everything for now. So any 2000 equals true, nick base equals 300, nick IQ equals three. MAC address equals ACDE4888998 and real nick equals list. Um, and then we're going to find the mute option or sound option. Mixer, no sound. Okay. Mixer, no sound equals true. So that will still emulate sound, but just disable the sound. Okay, let's check our build real quick to see if it's failed yet. Nope, still building some other stuff, that's okay. Let's boot DOSBox back up. Let's check the log at DOSBox here to see if it has failed to add the any 2000.
um, it should give some error about PCAP or it should just do nothing because I didn't compile it with any 2000 support before. It's, I don't know why I expected it to do something. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to CD FreeDOS drivers, um, cry Warner, cry NWR, and we're gonna find the any 2000 driver. Oh, got some big old gibberish around the screen there. That shouldn't happen. Um, yes, any 2000.com. So let's see how we install that. Packet driver for any 2000. So packet int number, int level, and IO address. I'm not sure what those are. I vaguely believe that um, they're speci uh, specified by other systems, like by programs. I think it's packet level six, int level, IO address. I'll have to check them out. Like it's possibly uh, packet interrupt number would be 60, interrupt level would be three, and NIC base would be 300. I'm not sure. Let's just try that now. Okay, that seems like it installed wrong, because it, well, it might have installed fine. We don't actually have the um, network card attached to this system. We just have nothing there. So DOS isn't going to find anything. Let's run mem real quick. And we'll just see. I wanna see a more detailed breakdown, please, of all the memory used by applications in DOS. So let's see. The NE2000 is actually using 5K of conventional memory, which would be nice to avoid. So what we're going to do is uninstall it using the dash U option. And then we're going to instead do LH for load high. Then the NE2000 thing. Then we're gonna check memory, memory again. And NE2000 is now running in the high section of DOS which means we still have 629K of conventional memory, which is good. We like to keep conventional memory open for applications to use. So, gosh, this is taking a while to compile. That's okay. You know what we might do? We might think a little bit more about how we're going to disable compiling um, this code, this any 2000 code. Because ideally, if we're going to submit this to the DOSBox X program, which I plan to, we can't just remove the, the um, PCAP code. So we're going to have to somehow make a definition for PCAP. So what we might do is we might do, instead of if zero, we might do, um, hmm, C underscore any 2000 PCAP. And we might use that later. And hopefully that would mean that we can compile in both PCAP and slurp stuff, slurp stuff. And we also want to check if we actually have a PCAP um, device active before we do PCAP, PCAP polling. But we won't worry about that yet since I don't have PCAP actually installed. Um, so yes, I think we'll have if C underscore NE2000 underscore PCAP for PCAP stuff and then 
slurp stuff um, with underscore any 2000 uh, underscore uh, slurp. So I'm actually gonna just edit the um, auto, the auto make file, make file dot am. configure dot a, um, ac we're going to edit that and that's already open because i opened it in my build um, terminal okay so let's just quickly uncomment that and so we have an error building any 2000 we get a whole bunch of cool errors so i'll have a look at that in a second but we're just going to go back to the any t the um, auto conf and just um, set up the pcap variable that we we're going to use. There we go. Okay, so DOSBox, you've made it to compile the any two thousand promiscuous mode disabled. Yeah, it's it's weird. So it says that my sent packet length li is not okay. Uh, so it's not a long int, it's just an int. Any 2000 TX event. Now, why is that? So it looks like there's an event called any, two, any, um, any 2000 TX event, which I've which uh, should be there, but it looks like it was just there with the um, PCAP code and I commented it out. That's a little strange. Let's just move that out of the PCAP code. Yeah, so that little variable there which it can't find now was just caught up. Weird. And because, because I edited the auto configuration file, it now wants to start over compiling. Thank you. Let's have a bit more look at this code and see if we have PCAP uh, support compiled in, how are we going to get the user to select which to use? Um, based on their configuration. Hmm. Well, let's assume that PCAP isn't always enabled. So yeah, we're going to have to write a little bit of code Yeah, we're going to write some code and that's just going to check if pcap is actually running and if not, it's going to skip some pcap stuff at runtime when we do have pcap enabled Add handle, yeah, so. Yes, there's a lot of PCAP stuff. Is it with the cute cat that just wanted my attention? Yep, that's the one. Kaz was there telling me about the cat. Slurp up that PCAP, don't say that. Don't say that, Kaz. I don't want to slurp up PCAP. Um, so I think I might have, let's do a git diff real quick of what I've changed in this code. Oops. So. 
source hardware. So I moved TX event away from the PCAP stuff, which is needed because it's independent of it. I've removed PCAP stuff when we're not compiling with it. And then I've made it at runtime conditional so that if PCAP is compiled, but it's not in use, then it won't crash. It will still make the network um, interface run. I think I'll actually check that because I think it might actually quit out when that happens. It might just be trained to quit if it can't use PCAP, but it's told to, but um, no, no, I won't mess with that yet. I was thinking that if it fails to find a PCAP thing, um, then it shouldn't immediately fail. Like it should just have an interface that wouldn't work, but that would be a change in behavior and also um, not what the user wants because if you set it, then you want it to work, right? So we'll just have like a kind of um, if statement based on configuration. So let's see, are you compiling still? Yep, 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 gotta recompile everything. That's the last time I'm touching auto configure. I've got that Gorillaz Pac-Man song stuck in my head. When I first heard it, I didn't really like it, but it's just stuck. I'm thinking that we should probably also in order to indicate to users, um, sorry, in order for users to indicate that we want to use slurp, should we add a new configuration um, option or should we edit real Nick? I think I should just add a new configuration option called um, slurp. Mm, I'm not too sure. We won't worry about that for now because um, good night, Yumio. Yumi too. Have a good sleep. Let's see, let's commit this to git already if it compiles. If this compiles, we'll commit it to git. Um, let's just set my git config real quick. Email is contact at jukia.org. Name is jukia. And if that compiles, hopefully we'll have a network card that can just receive packets from DOSBox and then just do nothing about it which would be a very good start because then we can hook up slurp stuff in order to actually send them to the internet. Let's copy the um, any 2000 driver to our C drive so I don't have to go into this, this directory again. Oops, in DOS it's called copy. I have to put a slash after C drive, oops, or it won't go to the C drive directory. It'll just do nothing except change drives. Let's see. We might also want to search up um, what our packet uh, configuration is going to be. Packet int number int level IO address. Um, do, 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 Firefox. I'm going to search up um, any two thousand 
DOS driver. And we're going to see what DOSBox suggests we do with this. Packet drivers for DOS. What a mode is that, Yumi? Day Suppy. Not sure. Um, any 2000. Does that have, that might have a read me I can read. That might just tell me what settings to put. No, it doesn't. That's not very useful to me. PCAP, free all devs, all devs, free them jukes. Yes, I'm sorry, but I have to. Oh, hang on a second. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Should it be freeing? Um, I've made the cleanup conditional of P cup close. No, that seems about right. Oh no, that was right. Oh no, I've put a bug there. I just missed that bug. Why? I forgot to, it sets the variable for PCAP stuff, but I didn't comment that out. Thanks Kaz, thanks for catching that. Hopefully it should error about it or not. Let's see, force driver to report itself, delayed initialization, Windows hack it, win packet. Okay, using the any 2000 in DOS. So, the any 2000 can only reside at five possible addresses in memory. Any interrupt. So, I think I was right. Yeah, I might have been right there with the any 2000 parameters. That's good. Real Nick and Slurp are the name of the racist characters in, in Rhythm Heaven. Oh, I didn't know they were racist. But once you pointed it out, it ruined the whole thing. Didn't make me happy at all. You know what, I'm going to be right back. One second. Hello again. We're back. Let's have a look at where we're up to. Um, this is still compiling. I believe it's gotten further than it was before. Let's have a look at our slurp code. Maybe we can just try and fit it in now while we're at it. That seems kind of fair, since otherwise we're just burning time. Oof. I don't know why OBS doesn't use real-time kit to get like real-time priority. Who knows? So instead of PCAP, we're going to have slurp. So what will we need for slurp? Um, we will need, according to my main.c program, which I would just show over here and have always on top. We will need stdio. No, we won't. That's for printing. Poll string. That's for member set. I think we might have that already. Time and slurp libslurp.h. 
and we're going to have to define a whole bunch of functions and stuff and I'll just copy paste them in I guess and I'll just copy paste the entire program in why not copy pasting is the only way to do this there we go so let's look at my mess of spaghetti so data structures we'll probably want to put our timers and poles and stuff at the top here I know I'm using global variables but come on it's fine We'll have our send packet here. Um, yep, 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 yep. Guest error. A lot of this is just printf. I should replace that with uh, log something, log message. Slurp time, I gotta time your slurp for maximum efficiency. Yeah. I've written some really basic code here. Let's go back down to my slurp stuff. Now callbacks. So what does our slurp tick do? Okay, so what we're actually going to do, why is polls clear there? Polls clear. I don't remember why I have this. I think I just need to do that once when I start the program. You know what, let's also make slurp a global variable. Why not? We're the global gang. Global variables for everyone. So slurp equals slurp is new, poll is clear. So we're gonna do that instead of the pcap stuff. If C any 2000 slurp. Oh no, not there. That's not the correct place to put that. Um, yeah, so instead of um, setting up pcap, we're gonna set up slurp. And we're going to then go on to, I guess we should clean up slurp, but I'll put a to do there. I'll definitely remember to fix that. Your programs run global variables and that's why they never work. Look, global variables are fine. Don't talk to me or my global variables again. Um, so during our poll code, what we're actually going to do is just run slurp tick. Um, slurp tick, which should uh, grab packets and trigger everything. And then when we want to send a packet, we should do slurp input, oops. This is not where slurp tick goes. That should go in poll. Slurp send, uh, it's not send packet, it's add packet. Slurp input, yes. I want slurp input whenever it's time to send a packet. And we're just gonna copy and paste that verbatim from the PCAP stuff. So it says slurp input, slurp, then the memory for the slurp, for the transfer, and then the transfer bytes. So this should be fine, I think. Um, that seems like the actual code that I need. Um, remove our main program uh, code. I believe that's actually everything we need. Let's move our data structure declaration up there as well. 
Um, and once we actually get the packet, um, I'm not going to, I'm deliberately not going to have it work at the moment, but uh, we're going to have to add it to the device, um, the any 2000 device using this code, which just says if it's not a loopback, then run RX frame on it. I'm not quite sure how that would work, but we'll see. All right, we got some errors from the any 2000 stuff. Or is that, is that the same thing? Yeah. So let's see. Sent packet length. Is there a fly outside that's buzzing really bad? God, I hate it. Okay, so sent packet len li is not working. I believe I changed that code though. Please get out of my way window. Bzz, it's you. No, don't show up at my stream making buzz noises, okay? Sent packet i. Um, I think I also put unnecessary new lines at the end of things. So we'll just deal with that in a bit. And by a bit, I mean now. I have a lot of debugging code left over from my spaghetti, which I just shoved into uh, DOSBox. You're the buzzer always annoying me, always. I don't know why I read that wrong. Okay. Does this code work now? No. Line 1639 S was not declared in this scope. You sure? 1639. I'm going to close that window there because it's not helping me. 1639 S is not declared in the scope. Why is that here? Did I paste that in the wrong area? Please don't, please don't talk about spaghetti that way. It makes everyone uncomfortable and it makes people disappointed in you. All right, sent packet slurp input. I wanna, yeah, okay. So I do seem to be printing everything I need to. Why is this giving me errors? Warnings? Ah. Uh, Warnings are for people that care about their code quality, but I'm really kind of phoning it in here. I just want a proof of concept. You're the biggest disappointment since 1997. What are you saying about my brother? All right, so the any 2000 code is compiling now. Um, you know what, let's just, is the any 2k device, is that a global variable? Yeah, great. Let's just paste that in, why not? Why does that, uh, that packet header That's a bit weird how the packet header here, the PCAP packet header has the length of it there. It uh, has a length field, that's a bit weird. That's okay though. All right, let's make that again. So if all goes well, this might actually just work. Oops. The any 2K device was not in this scope. Okay, that's fine. I'll worry about that later.
I just want, uh, I want it to try to send packets out and get packets back. I know I've gone from, I just want this to be a broken ethernet card to, I want to be able to send packets really fast, but the compiler times just giving me nothing else to do. It's hard to do incremental development like that. So while that's compiling, let's look at what we can do with the code. Um, if I move the any 2k device can I move that so it's above everything here above my slurp code and then just use it I'll try that next time ideally we should be passing it a uh, kind of opaque timer or whatever not timer um, an opaque variable around containing the things that I need which I might do in a bit but global variables, mwah, they're great. Um, and I also have to do's here. Lots of to do's, that how it go. And hard coding of stuff. <laughs> Jukes a chef kissing on stream, of course. Dabbing? No, I don't. You can dab, but I don't have a webcam to dab yet. So let's see. Do you got any games in this in this DOS on the USB? Games. Boletaire, Boom, Britannic. Okay, listen. You can't just put B in front of everything. Um, Eliza, one of the earliest computer chatterbot AIs. This was before the Alice chatterbot, I think. Let's see if Eliza wants to talk to us. Hi, I'm Eliza. I am your personal therapy computer problem. Please tell me your problem. I have to wait for long compiler times and I don't deserve this. Sorry, I seem to have misplaced the response files. Are you, are you kidding me? I need to change directory into that. It's, I expected very little and I got less than I thought I would. Okay, let's see. Eliza.exe, I'm in the current direct, I'm in the proper directory now. Please tell me your problem. Computer's bad. Do computers worry you? Yeah, they worry me. Say, do you have any psychological problems? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Why did you repeat yourself? Because you asked me the question and it had the same answer. We were discussing you, not me. Look. Look. What does that suggest to you? Why are you doing this? Why are you like this? Why are you, in, are you interested in whether or not I'm doing this? Why am I like this? Okay, exit, quit, go north. <laughs> Getting owned on chat. Yeah, I can't, I'm not good with the, the 5D therapy chess. Okay, DOSBox is compiling now. Like uh, linking rather. So we'll be able to test our changes in a minute. Ooh. Exciting. Exciting. Look. I thought it would be faster. Net buoy. <laughs> uh, the older, simpler times. Hey, Viable Clan member, what's up? T 
terminal based Tetris clone flight simulator that focuses on the realism, the realism of flight. All right, DOS, it, it's ready. All right, let's make install this. But before that, we need to remove something from the make file. That's probably a bug, but I don't know. It looks like no one really reviewed the code. We're going to install and we're gonna quit. Let's see if our network driver works now, huh? It's ticking slurp and it's sending packets to the guest and it's really slow. Huh. Why is it really slow? Do you want to slurp ticks? No. So this could be slow because it's ticking too fast. So what we will do is actually debug this. Let's attach a debugger and just see what's happening. Why are you slow? I want to quit, please. You should be much faster than that DOS box. So I'm going to use GDB to profile this mess. So it's frozen right now. Let's see what it's doing. It's running pole and it's slurping. It is slurp ticking. I'm a frog in a forest slurping ticks off rocks. Don't say that. So slurp tick. Timeout should be zero, I think. Not that. Let's see that. Um, let's see if that fixes it. No, that gives me an error. How dare you? How absolutely dare you? Why would you do this? I don't understand. Oh, I see. I see the point. No, that makes sense. Um, let's see. And return statement with no value. Return zero. Uh, actually, we'll return length. Just say we ate it, I guess, because QME likes that. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Link him up, boys. Um, oh wait, wrong window. Is this gonna be slow? I'll run it in GDB just to make sure. <gasps> it's faster, much faster. And it's ticking and it's sending packets to the guest. Could it be? Let's load it. Any 2000, zero times 60, load high. <gasps> No, well, it found the, it found the device. Um, so let's try doing ping google.com. Um, links google.com. Links, I have to go to the actual directory, links.exe. And then we'll have to open a proper URL. Configuring through boot p. I don't know if QMU supports that or if it's going to actually handle boot P. I might have to set the, the, IP, the IP address manually. Configuring through DHCP, uh, Slurp should handle DHCP. Is it actually getting any packets? So it says it when it ticks, but it's not uh, send packet to guest. Uh, we want to do, we want to remove a lot of the junk that we have that confirms that slurp is working. And we want to find out, is it actually getting packets from the guest? So let's exit DOSBox and we'll have a quick look to see if it's receiving packets. And that should be where slurp input runs. 
it should say slurping packet length I. So this could be some kind of IO issue. We'll see. I also imagine the slowdown that you saw from DOS there was just from spamming standard output. Let's see. Yeah, that looks to be the case. When you spam standard output in Linux or whatever, it this isn't a Twitch bot. Look, it'll happen unless you're new here and that's a genuine question. I just need to get networking working again. Uh, why is that? Oh, you're new? Well, I've been doing, I've been working on making it Twitch bot in DOS for about a year now, and I'm coming back to it, and I can't remember how I networked DOSBox, so now I'm just writing a driver in DOSBox in order to network it properly. And then I can finally continue my craft. All right, um, MTCP, do we have a DHCP? Yeah, so let's see, is that? Also welcome. I have to edit the MTCP configuration file. All right, there, saved. It's empty. Packet int, all right. Why is STDL, did I, not STDL, did I um, build with SDL2 by accident? I might have. That's a bug I have to report. Uh, packet int equals 60. Do you do any DOS programming? I actually have a packet int example file um, in my DOS garbage fire directory. So let's go look at that real quick. Otherwise I'll be here forever mtcp.configuration. Packet int zero times 60. There. So it should be sending DHCP requests now. Slurping packet length 301. So it is actually sending packets to slurp. That could be good news. Um, that means that the driver is actually working. So what I'm going to do is edit the auto exec. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. I'll worry about that later. I just can't deal with that. There's too many things there. So slurp input isn't working. And I don't know why, but I do have a suspicion. So what we're going to do is check my code again. Yes, it does have DHCP. So the next thing I'm going to do is link this against a debug build of slurp I did. And for that, I'm going to edit the make file. L. Um, this is going to look a bit weird. O to be a frog pcap slurping text. Don't, don't, don't. So I have an actual um, copy of lib slurp there in home juki desktop slurpy lib slurp, but it's a statically linked one. So I have to add some extra stuff. I have to add some extra libraries in order for it to work. Now did that work? Let's just check the LDD.
and we'll just see if it, oh no, it, it, it tried to use slurp anyway, the wrong library. So let's see anywhere else in the file where it's referencing slurp. Nope. It's just doing that. Do I have to delete the actual file? Oh, there might be a make file in here. Yeah, okay, so I was putting the edit in the wrong location. It should be in source make file, not uh, here. Okay, let's try that again. And let's run LDD on it afterwards, just to check that it's not linking with the system slurp. It is, it's still doing it. This is, this is not very nice of it. Actually, no, we could probably manually link it ourselves, couldn't we? Hang on. This is the worst idea, but it could be a good idea sometimes. Wait, that should be working because it sets the, oh, uh, is there a, I'm setting the I variable instead of the L variable. It's a capital I, it should be a capital L. All right, let's see, will that fix it? Hopefully this should give us a debug slurp. And we can debug why slurp isn't working. Oh, it looks like it is. Uh, yep, slurp is now statically linked in and we can use GDB to figure out why this ain't working. So what we're going to do is break on slurp input and then run. And when it's time for, when the machine tries to send a packet, we'll have a look at what happens then. Um, and if it's a checksum problem, then I will rip that code out of libslurp because that's the same issue I had on my machine and I had to disable hardware checksums and I hate it. Okay, so we get our NE2000 driver loaded. That's good. Then we want to do MTCP DHCP. Um, set mtcp config equals c drive mtcp dot config dhcp. Okay, it should be broken now. Okay, so let's just step through this and see what's happening. All right, so it detects that it's an IP packet. Don't spare my chat about supplemental life insurance for retirement. It also seems like a bit of a pyramid scheme. I should really talk to a lawyer before doing that. All right, so let's see. It looks at the IP packet. I think it correctly checksums it. Where are we in the code? It detects it's a UDP packet. That's a little weird, but okay. Let's see. Does the UDP checksum fail? No. So it continues to kind of work. It detects that it's boot P. So this is actually going fairly well so far. It does boot P reply, um, which I just messed up. So it should actually send the packet again and grab that and break it boot P reply. And let's see what reply it gives us. Oh, 
Oh no, this is the wrong one. Okay, next bootp client, dhcp decode. Oh no, is this because I didn't set a host name? No, don't say that. Don't tell me this isn't, this is because I didn't set a host name. So it gives us a new address. It adds it to the ARP table. It replies, it mem copies, it sets the client IP address. Adds the cookie. So this might actually be sending an actual packet as a response. This part might be fine. It might be that I just haven't um, added it to the buffer yet for the, uh, for the driver. It might be that I haven't got packet input working. Yeah, that seems like it works. Like it's going pretty, pretty um, deep into the code there. So it's passing most, if not all the checks. Let's have a quick look at what my code does. Let's break at Rx frame. Do, do, do. Um, that does a lot of stuff. Let's break at slurp send packet. I have a suspicion it's to do with this weird loop thing. So I'll comment that out in and, and just compile it. And we'll just see if that's what's going on. Is it because I haven't set it to be not a loopback device? Could that be what it is? Make. Where's my build terminal? Make. There we go. I have a feeling this is what the problem is because it seems obvious. But I've missed a lot of obvious stuff so far. The IRS code requires that taxes be paid on all gains if you surrender the policy or the policy elapsed. Okay, listen. Are you just sending me... Are you sending me IRS memes? Yeah. Yeah, it is a little bit dark, but you know. That's the IRS for you. Okay, load the driver. Um, set MTC config equals C drive MTCP dot config. And then MTCP DHCP. All right, it doesn't seem to be getting any requests. Or it's doing nothing. Attempt one timeout. Okay. Timeout is interesting because it's not sending anything back. So time to break into our uh, slurp send packet. And we'll have a look at how that works. I have a feeling that I'm skipping a packet header or something. But we have um, packet output going. Um, yeah, packet output. So QMU does actually reply to it. It's just not, not QMU, Slurp does actually reply to it. It's just not inputting it. All right, let's step into this. Let's actually look at the buffer here. I don't know, I'm messing with GDB. All right, let's continue, continue. It's constantly getting IP version six packets. So we're just gonna delete our breakpoints and we're gonna break slurp send packet if len is not equals to 134. There. Conditional breakpoints, yes. Huh. Oh no, no, it, it, I thought it wasn't getting it, but it is. Okay, so let's step into this. 
And let's see what happens in the code here. It receives the frame. It looks like it puts it in the packet. It copies it. It activates the IRQ. Uh, let's step out of that. I'll we'll just go next for now. Return. What is that it? Huh. So it does actually add it to the ring buffer. Hang on a second. Let's look at that code again. How does the actual um, PCAP stuff call RX frame? Header length, PCAP packet header, packet data. Where does it get packet data from? What is happening here? What's BX debug? Can I enable that? If false, too much debug info, listen. I want that debug info and I want it now. Spray me with the fire hose of debug. Or is it drink from the fire hose? I'm not sure. I don't know how any of this works. I'm just saying things that sound kind of smart, but aren't because it's more important to sound smart than it is to be smart. Okay, run this. Let's get that debug info. Woo! I think. Did I enable it properly? Spraying and slurping. Vaguely watery stuff, isn't it? Okay. Set mtcp config equals cdrive mtcp.config. And then we're going to do mtcp-dhcp.config and see what messages we get. We get nothing. We get no debug messages. Slurping packet length 301. Err. Err. Is it on the wrong interrupt? Do I have my settings sane? Let's just do a quick confirmation to see that I do have the actual interrupts and stuff set. Interrupt three. Will that fix it? <gasps> that was it. My code was correct. But my DOS code was wrong. Could this be actual like networking in DOS? Ben Shapiro's life motto. What was the what was it? I missed it. Let's see if networking works. Does DNS work? Oh, not looking good. Feelings don't care about your facts. I don't think that's what it is. So we have a DHCP thing. And we also have a lot of graphical glitches because SDL is a little bit weird. Does that fix it? If I hang on, if I set the double buffering, does that fix that? Okay. So MTCP is set. What other stuff do we have? Do we have a ping? It's ping google.com. Will that work? 
it might be that we don't have the appropriate permissions for that. No, it does have the, it's sending back a packet. Huh. So it can get DHCP requests, but it's not taking back the packet. Jerks, what's your real opinion on Ben, Appear ben Shapiro singing WAP? Look, I don't know. I think I think we need to move on from from those memes. I think there's I think the meme economy is going to fail if we keep going with the Ben Shapiro memes. So DHCP works. However, it's still not accepting packets for DNS related stuff. So now we have to figure out why it's doing that. Look, please don't thirst over Ben Shapiro in chat. God, oops. I think my nose is bleeding now because of that. Okay, let's remove this driver. And let's see what happens if we install it. What does it try and default to? Zero times 60. Interrupt nine. Yeah, so actually on interrupt three. It's just your body rejecting it? No. Rejecting Ben? I think so. Yep, there's the blood. Okay, if I... I don't know how to deal with this. I guess it's just like, cause it's, cause it's hot. Like summary. Okay, let's try doing the, what was that program we, program we ran before, free bleeding? Please don't. What was that program we ran before that did DHCP by itself and I was confused? Was it Lynx? Yeah, it's not, uh, taking back the packets. So let's have a look. I can probably uncomment that code since it seems to be useful. Slurp send packet. So let's uh, break at slurp send packet. Um, break if len doesn't equals 134 because we've got IP version support, IP version six support in this. Wait, is it not? Is it actually not getting DNS stuff back? Huh, what? Huh? Oh no, it is. It's got a packet back. So let's step into that and see what happens. Next, 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 next. It seems that it's actually going to receive it. Current page. It activates the IRQ. It did it. It should be doing it. Okay. Why? Could it be that my DNS is wrong? Let's see, mtcp.configuration. Let's set the DNS to a known good like 8.8.8.8. Um, 
if the edit program wants to run. Wow, there must be some slowdown with this constant polling of stuff. Wow, that's a big slowdown. I haven't seen it this slow before. But let's persist. Let's set the name server to 8.8.8.8. .8. Oh, this looks like some kind of exponential complexity, not complexity. Oh, it must be GDB. Hang on a second. Yeah, let's just delete that breakpoint. All right, that's fixed. Yeah, that wasn't my code, that was GDB. All right. If I use Google's DNS, does that work? I mean, it seemed to just immediately return without an error when I did HTGET. Something weird is happening here. Links time? Yeah. Your boy links. <sighs> Why does HT get return nothing? Um, let's just try jukia.org because I know that works with HTTP without HTTPS. Nope, nothing. Uh -huh. Print verbose status messages. DOS error level code one. We're getting some limit checks there. Could that be related? Oops, not there, not there. Why do I have so many terminals that aren't named? No, it should be slurping that packet. What would my fursona be? I don't know. I think it'd be like a Sonic type character. Some something from there. Hmm. So it's slurping the packet. I did install. I hope I did install some Ethernet tools. So let's see if that helps troubleshoot this. Um, let's see. Eth tools, eth. Okay, so I have to look for eth tools. Unexpectedly wholesome. What did you think I was gonna say? Oh, we're gonna go to bin and it should be eth something. Eth dump. That's giving us a lot of packets. I might have to just turn off IP version six stuff. I just realized that S tool isn't gonna help us um, here because it's not gonna be able to grab stuff. Hmm. Let's see. I think that froze it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? Is slurp freezing it? No. Maybe I need to do quit, Q, whatever. Um, reboot guest system. I'm going to just quickly review my code. Let's shut down FreeDOS and we'll just have a quick look to see if I missed anything blatantly wrong. So where's my code? So send packet return RX frame buff length. 
the length might be an issue as with the buffs, but I'll have to check that. Though so it did get DHCP stuff. And this code here seems to indicate. Um, that I, what I've done was right. It seems to check that it's actually using the correct lengths and everything. Let's add a print line whenever it, uh, well, no, it does. It activates the RQ. Let's log that. And we want to do IPs, uh, Yeah, in six enabled, let's just disable that. So we don't get spam everywhere. So far, this all looks good. Um, let's look at some PCAP code. Maybe it's done something in the initialization. PCAP packet header, let's search that up. Because I'm suspicious that that's actually going to be the wrong type of, um, the wrong structure. Like, um, not the wrong structure. It's gonna have the wrong um, values. Like there's gonna be some offset or something. So PCAP, packet header, cap len, length of portion present, length of this packet off wire. What does that mean? What does off wire mean? Um, PCAP. Header. Let's do next X. Hmm. There's a lot of words to read there and I'm not sure I need to read them at the moment. So I'm gonna give that a quick skip. Have a quick look down at this PCAP stuff. Should probably move this to this slurp stuff and put it after the PCAP stuff. Promiscuous mode. Is that what I want? Hmm, I don't think so. All this code seems fine. So at this point, I think I'm gonna have to, yeah, to do clean up slurp, oh no. I think we're gonna have to debug the RX frame here and see if there's anything different between the DHCP and the DNS stuff. It could be that, it could be that the DHCP is simply allowed more because um, because addressing or overhead or something like there's multicast for DHCP. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. V host name. Let's change that to DOSBox. DOSBox X, just in case that's something that actually matters. 
And we'll also want to try testing with what TCP stuff in case there's a bug in MTCP. Okay. Opening this up. Load any 2000 com three. Yep, so I set the IO port and the interrupt number. That's all good. It finds the Ethernet address. Now let's install some what TCP networking stuff. Um, what TCP? Well, that's installed. Isn't there extra tools or something? I'll install H2 get, HT to get. And I thought there was a set of one TCP based tools. I guess not. Hmm. Okay, install that. Um, let's do HTD get google.com. Configuring through, so this is using what TCP and it should be, it configures it through DHCP then it resolves to, it should resolve google.com. It does, it's not doing packet interrupts whenever there's a packet it's added. What? Could that be part of the issue? Maybe it's just missing out on packets. You would think that the packet interrupt would fire. Unless it got all those packets at once, but we have a whole bunch of 70 packets. We could assume that 319 length packets and 322 length packets are something. I don't know what it is. This is confusing. Let's just see what happens again when we do that. What happens when we run that? It resolves Google. It's trying to resolve Google. It gets a packet of length 60, then some of length 70. Okay, well, time to dump these packets, I guess. Um, B slurp. What was it? Slurp. Send packet. Was that what it is? Yeah. Continue. We're going to have to look over each packet individually to see what's going on here. Okay, packet one, length 64. Um, let's see. Uh, X64 buff. Oops. Oops, how do you do a hex dump in GDB? It's not 64, it might be 64X. Yeah, there we go. So that's our packet there. Good, let's continue. Oh, so it's slurping packet length is actually sending it. But we're not getting any back, are we? So we're actually not receiving any packets. Hmm. All right, time to set up Wireshark. Um, but before I do that, I guess it's not actually, let's use S-Trace instead to see what's happening. 
s trace trace equals net. Um, I really don't want to use Wireshark because it shows my MAC address. Okay, so it should show our net stuff. And it's spamming my, my terminal with, with useless junk using receive message. Okay, that's not helpful. But we're going to break its slurp input and just see what happens there. I have a feeling it's still with checksums again, which I talked about earlier, but we'll see. We shall see. Break slurp input. Slurp input is when um, the machine actually sends stuff to it. Just turn the starting message on for a sec to cover it. Nah, I don't want to do that. It's too much effort. And plus it probably wouldn't tell us anything we, we don't already know. Like we know it's not sending packets. Um, so let's see what happens if we do f um, htget google.com again. Oh. Load the packet driver. I'll have to put that in the in the auto configuration thing. Okay, so what happens here? Okay, ARP input, that works, good. What happens here? M get slurp. So we're sending another packet. I don't know what's going on there. Why is our breakpoint going off? No, D3, D1, D2, break, slurp, input, continue. And so, yeah, so what is our packet? Should we be stripping the ethernet headers? Hmm. Not sure. Let's continue. So this is, I assume this is a bad packet. Or where are we at? It's trying to resolve it. So let's print it and let's just, um, hang on a second. Yeah, so it's resolving google.com. So the packet seems well formed, I guess. So this is a bad packet. Doesn't send. So what's a good packet look like? Um, it's going to do DHCP again. Wait, no, it's not. It's interesting. Hmm, I think I see a little bit of the issue there. Oh no, I made my docs, my DOS super tall. I didn't know you could do that. I don't like this. That's too tall. Ugh. Okay. Um, okay, delete the what TCP configuration. Let's try doing packet stuff. Okay. Oops. No, I want to print that hex values of that. Oops. Copy. Copy, copy, copy. Continue. And then I assume this one does copy, uh, maybe sends. This one maybe sends. And then 
Yeah, okay, and then we get to the TCP stuff, which, again, if we go back to it. Doesn't send. Okay, so let's have a look at the difference here. Um, the packet frames look like it's the same length. Is that leftover memory? Oh yeah, I've I printed it. I printed um it. I printed. Oh no! Don't start a second DOS box, please. Yeah, I printed um the packet too long. So we should probably just ignore that. I set the length wrong when I was uh, outputting this. So maybe it's an IP thing. I don't know. We should actually just look at what GDB is going to tell us. All right. So this packet isn't going to send. This packet looks like it will send because it starts with 377 hex value and this one isn't going to send. So let's see what happens here. It looks like the packets validate, then it does IP input. The checksum is correct. Then it does UDP input. It seems to work so far. Wait, 127. Yeah, so um, the checksum for the UDP thing passes, correct. If slurp Restricted, so it skips the restricted part. If there's no socket for the path, then it tries to open a socket, I believe. But does it actually send the packet? Did it send the packet or not? All right, time to open up Wireshark. Hang on a second. No, it does not. It is not sending out the packet. So this is where things get a bit more difficult. Time to dive into Slurp's code and check at what point does it send things out. Actually, no, we should S trace this. All right, this is going to hurt to S trace. All right, here we go. S trace output into big log. Slurp code time. You like saying slurp and that upsets me a little bit. Uh, load the any 2000 driver. Then we run htgetgoogle.com. All right, then we quit DOSBox. If DOSBox allows me to quit it, then we look at the log. All right. All 
Let's see, we want to find open. Um, oh, this is going to be just a lot more noise. Okay, we don't want receive, uh, we want to find receive message and delete it. File descriptor four says it has an input event, but we're not reading from it. Gosh, there's a lot of stuff happening here. Mm. Three, seven, seven, nope, okay. So S trace isn't going to be helpful. There's too much noise. So let's look back at our code. This code that does work. I tested it. Well, it doesn't work. I'm not printing when I send a packet. Hang on a second new packet I'm it maybe it's receiving the packet maybe I just am not realizing it it would look like um, I lost my build uh, window so we're just gonna make this one the new build window um, nice make J1, nice make J1 install. There we go. It might be receiving actual packets back from Google. That would be good. And the issue would be in my DOSBox handling code. That would be good. So let's see, yes, we want to boot FreeDOS. Come on, FreeDOS. Um, load the driver, run HTD, HTGET Google.com. Google.com, can I write that? HT, HTGET Google.com. Okay, so what does this say? Slurp new packet. So we're not getting a new packet. Are we? If we run it again, we get a new packet, then it gets the packet interrupt, then it keeps sending it. Why? All right. Let's break on send packet and we'll see what's happening. We'll look at the actual data of the packet we get back. Okay, so this should be a DNS packet. X64 X buff. I'm um, sorry, that should be like a string. How am I not doing this properly? Okay. It looks correct, I think. What is Google's actual IP? 216.168.1.1. So what is that in hex? Hex 216. Hex 58, hex 200, hex 110. So D83AC86E. I don't see it in the in the response. 
What is this packet? So it gets back that packet again. Are we getting back some kind of invalid packet that isn't actually what we want? And then it keeps sending packets and not getting back responses. Why would it not get back responses again? Maybe um, it's using some kind of session or something. I'm not sure. Okay, well, let's look at this packet again. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go again. All right. This is our packet. So let's decode it manually. All right, Ethernet header. All right, preamble seven octets. Start of frame development of one octet. All right. Is it possible this isn't actually a proper frame? So we're on Ethernet 2. So it should have two MAC addresses, and one of those should actually be the correct MAC address. And as you can see here, ACDE4888988 um, AA, that would be our destination MAC address. And then we'd have another one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so it's six, I think it's six bytes um, per MAC address, yeah. So then after that, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'd have eight, six, which would be the IP header, the other type. Yeah, and then the IP header, So that checks out that Ethernet stuff so far. IP header. Um, let's search up. IP header. Is my nose bleeding? Only a little bit. I need to get that looked at. Okay, IP header. IP version 4 header. <coughs> Version, okay, so octet, why do you write octet? Okay. Why is this written in octets? Okay, whatever. So the first four bytes should be version, something else in total length. So version, I guess zero, eight, something, something, something. Length is four. What? Length can't be four. Octet four, maybe length, oh no, length is four, zero, zero, whatever. Okay. Wait, is that it? I think I, it says ACDE4888-99. Why is that there? Why is that in the packet? It's the MAC address. I don't think the MAC address should be in an IP packet, should it?
like there it is. It's right in the MAC address. It's aligned. Am I looking at some kind of op thing? Do I need to clear the, uh, how, hang on. Do I need to clear the buffer? Don't say that this is what it is. Slurp new packet buffer. No, I shouldn't have to clear the buffer. So it receives the frame. This is so confusing. Why is BX underscore debug not working? That should be logging stuff. Is there a tool that will um, IP packet uh, examiner? Is there a tool that would just let me type in an IP packet? Search up at Google. Hmm. So what are the options here? It would seem to me that we are actually writing the correct data. Fly, why would you do that? Don't be like that, fly. Set up packet header. Does it add its own um, header to the packet? This is slightly confusing. And by slightly, I mean completely. So let's think about what works. DHCP works, boot P works. Why would those work? If we were returning invalid packets, then it just wouldn't work, would it? Could it be that my DNS settings on my computer are wrong and I need to set DNS manually? And this is a DNS issue. Look, Fly, if you're going to be like that. I hate that Fly so much. Why? You, there's nothing here for you. Okay, 63. Uh, it's giving me weird frame buffer output. Uh, weird frame buffer disaster. Okay, do we have dig? Um, MTCP. We don't have a dig program, do we? What's packet tool? No, we don't have that. We don't have a need for that. DNS test. Name google.com. Step mtcp config equals c drive mtcp config. And I guess we'll edit c drive mtcp config to have. Oh, it already has everything there, including a name serve. So let's try that. I don't have a name server set up. Oh, do I accidentally truncate the name there? Are 
Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? Hang on a second. Is it that my the DNS server in Slurp is not working? The DNS server in Slurp isn't working. This is the same issue I had with Alpine. My code works, it's just that, oh, oh, my head, oh. Okay. So. Hang on a second. Let me edit something. I see, oh, hang on a second. This is a stupid Linux configuration problem. That name server 8.8.8. .8 I'm editing something in the root terminal so you can't see it. Okay, so now does it work? If I set my name server to be like Google's? No. Oh, it might need to restart. Like if we go to cat etc name server, uh, etc resolve.configuration. Oh, it's, did I accidentally make that? Nobody can read that. There we go. I've added my Google name server there. Aren't computers good? Yeah, they're okay. So let's see if this works now. Doing my stretches. Doing my stretches. Ow. Oh, ouch. Oh, I stretched too much. Oh. Okay. Um, load it. And then we're going to do htgetgoogle.com. Oh my God. It works. except it's a little bit slow, I think. Let's see if Lynx works. Making HTTP connection, is this going to work? It's... So, it's sending packets now but it's not getting a response. BX error. Look, fly. You can't just... Yeah, run away. Closing my window. I will, I will cook in here to avoid the fly. I will cook for the chat. Send fax to one three one to one three one five two six eight dash x x x x space nice. How do you have a space in a? Okay, so this is kind of working. Like we can resolve DNS. That seems fine. It seems good. Like if I do um, mtcp slash DNS test name twitch.tv. Oops. Set mtcp config equals c drive mtcp config. So it resolves DNS. Why am I dying? It's supposed to be winter. It's uh, DOSBox, please don't just flash big lights at me. I'm afraid that's gonna actually like give someone sickness. I might have to minimize the window. Um, it's supposed to be winter, it's summer. Well, it's getting to be summer, it's September. I'm lucky I don't have my fan on yet, but it's, it's getting close to, to fan time. Okay, so does, uh, 
Is this a UDP TCP thing? Hmm. Where do I live? Why am I, why am I there? Why am I, I was just in sweaters. Oh, you mean the other stream before? Yeah, that was cold. It gets hot. All right. The seasons change somewhat abruptly now where I live. It's either cold or it's hot. All right. So let's try telnet google.com 80. Oops. Can we get so it's it can't do TCP connections. That's what I would think. So I'm gonna quickly just check my Wireshark in a second. and see what's actually happening. I don't think this should show anything personal, but I'll fix it in the in, in post if it does. All right, so we're gonna capture a htget of google.com uh, and a DNS capture. So let's do this start. Um, start. Oops. We need to make that a dot slash a dot. So that resolved, and then we're going to do htget twitch.tv. Oops. And now it should just be sending packets or it seems to be hung. Connection failed. Do you have anything cool here? So it's only actually sending out the DNS. Okay. Why? Um, so let's open up it in a debugger again. <clears throat> so I think it's not sending out, yeah, it's definitely not sending out the TCP packets. So let's GDB that and have a look. Why is Shark doxes you with your social security number and kind of steals your credit card to order you horrible items like a hundred Sonic plushies? Oh. It's so cute, but also I don't want that. So I don't want you to steal things for me. <clears throat> the economy is going down and you have to buy, all right? I want you to buy products. Do you understand? All right, slurp send packet. Let's break, oh no, not slurp send packet, slurp input. We want to test that. All right, so we do a ht get. Um, that looks like a DNS packet. Yeah, I guess more DNS. I guess that resolves it. That looks to be like it starts with RU. You're going to uh, buy stocks. Okay, so I think this is definitely at least a packet. Let's see. Length 60, X 60, uh, C packet. 
No, that doesn't seem like it would be it. Or maybe it is it. Seems like it's a bit of gibberish to me. Okay. So that's the packet it keeps sending. So let's just step through this and see what's happening. Switch protocol. It's an IP packet. Yep. Next, 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 next. It checksums correctly. TCP input, step into it. Yep, 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 yep. <coughs> Switching address family. I guess it's IP version four that it's doing the address for. Seems to be saving everything and mem setting it. Check summing seems to work. It's setting up the packet. Switch address family. It has a it has a socket, and the socket says it's connecting. So then it drops it. What? Huh? I didn't test my uh, I didn't test my packet thing uh, with TCP packets. Okay, so it's actually dropping the packet because the socket state is stuck on connecting. So let's look at the slurp code for a bit. Source. Open in terminal. Let's just grep for SFS is connecting. All right, I think I'm not, I'm not telling slurp properly about the socket states that it needs to know about. So let's see. Slurp pull out. Oh no. Add poll. Slurp pull out, slurp pull error. <sighs> I've been using the, the wrong, um, I need to translate these. That's what's happening. All right, I've been just passing things to the API wrong. Okay. Where do we go to our code? We need to convert things when we do our little, um, when, we, when we pull for things in Slurp, uh, when Slurp asks us to watch connections, we've been converting the events wrong. You really, really, really love slurp? Please don't. Okay, so we're gonna have to um, if events has slurp pull in, events um, include poll in, I think. Is that what it is? All right, we're just gonna have some quick code that sets up the events um, properly. Like I'm converting them between slurp events and uh, Unix events. This code would have to be different on um, Windows, I think. And then We'll have to do um, the reverse. So real uh, real events as in return events, we'll set that. And it's gonna be in the reverse. So 
just change the text around the other way. So when we add a poll, a poll like a file descriptor to watch, we're going to have it check each event that Slurp supports and see if Slurp wants it. Then we're going to translate that to Unix events. Then we're going to add the poll. And then when we do actually get an event, we'll have to translate the event that we got um, back from Unix events to Slurp events. Okay, so this might actually save us, save our problems. Where's my build thing? Oh, okay. So this is something that I didn't really check before. Oh, there's an error. Don't tell me that. Real events. Great. I spent it. It should be real events. Yeah. Now let's see, is this gonna work? This could actually be the end of, not the stream, but um, debugging this. This could be the final piece of the puzzle. This could be the final, like some kind of countdown. All right. HTTP google.com. Is it still hanging? That's uh, not good. You love cute mouse? It's CT mouse. Unless it says cute mouse. And in that case, you're correct. <coughs> hmm. Register poll file descriptor. Is that something that I'm missing? I'm converting between all the slurp events now. It says open timed out. That's fair. Um, what we will do is add a print line log. All right. Add poll. Add poll. Uh, we're going to have the file descriptor and the events and the new events. Um, FD events. Oh, I see what the issue is. Real events equals events. Events equals zero. That might actually explain why it's not working. Um, events, real events. And then we'll also print out the opposite way when it decodes the events. Get events. So that would be IDX real events. Revents. Revents just means return events. So that should actually work as I say each time. And it had an error, why? Oh, that shadows the parameter. Um, I guess I'll just overwrite the parameter then, I don't care. This is my sloppy code. I'm gonna submit it on GitHub, see if anyone's interested and maybe fix it up. All right, run this. And I'll have to edit the, the config or the auto sys. I'll do that now. Yeah, it says cute mouse. Config.sys. FD config.sys. Should this have all my drivers? Nope. Um, edit FD auto dot bat. And we're just going to find where the drivers get loaded. 
dev load ct mouse. Yeah, we should probably put it here. Um, load high DOS there drivers cry water any 2000.com 063 0300. That work. We'll see you next time. Um, oops, I typed it in wrong. HTGET twitch.tv. Still nothing. Oh. Yep, yeah, so it's spamming uh, my actual. Yeah, it's it it is spamming um, my output. That could be making it slow. I'm not sure, but evidently it's not working well enough. So let's remove the spam. and have a think about this. So based on my no knowledge at all, I think this code is fine. Unless I've completely forgotten what the bitwise operator and does. Let's just check that. So let's say we have um, a string 1010, uh, binary number 1010, OB 1010. Yeah, and then we do that with OB 100, and that should be zero. But if it's just with 10, that should be 10. Yeah, so that seems like it should be working fine. Slip so poll in. Wait, do we have different return events? Probably not, but let's just check that too. Poll pry, poll hub, poll and val. Oh, so hop isn't um, in the actual input events, that's only a return. Poll in, yep. Poll out. I guess they don't do poll out. Poll up. Well, it's poll D hop error. That's not an input, uh, that's only in events. Poll hop. Um, poll and val. Hmm. And then we have this register poll FD thing. I don't know what it wants me to put there. So the only code which I know will actually use this property is called VDE slurp. So let's have a check at that. Because slurp is otherwise fairly undocumented. And this should work. This is under the GNU LGPL 2.1. I'm unclear on like, I don't think I am making a derivative work or whatever. I'm just merely referencing it. As documentation. Um, let's see. Slurp to poll. Yep, that's basically the same code that I wrote. Poll to slurp. Add poll. And they have some pretty cool code that manages a dynamic list. Get revents. 
register poll FD and unregister does nothing on their side. Huh. What could be the matter here? When we remove a um, polls clear, are we not clearing? Oh, we're not doing that. We need to clear it before every tick. I think, uh, Let's just try that. Before every tick, we're going to clear the, um, we're going to fill, um, we're going to delete, we're going to prune, we're going to clear the um, file descriptors before Slurp gives them to us. Maybe that's confusing Slurp somehow, having file descriptors it doesn't know about. Okay, let's see. Let's run it. And let's see if the uh, com thing works, the driver. Let's see if it loads. File not found. Thank you. Why is the file not found? DOS, uh, DOS dear drivers, cry water, any 2000. DOS dear. Drivers cry water any two thousand dot com file not found. Okay. So let's do a directory. We'll have a look at that. File not found. Have I spelled cry water wrong? Cry cry N W R. So it's not Warner, it's newer. I don't know why I wrote Warner, maybe Time Warner. We'll see. So let's save that. Let's fix our load um, command. Yep. And let's do HTTP get and see what happens. So that doesn't help. It's spreading. Time Warner is such a brain worm. Yeah. Let's see. That's fine. We'll just have to mark file descriptors a little bit um, when we add them because our code registers it. Maybe I should remove that though. I'll just make that a no op for now. Maybe register poll FD and unregister poll FD is not going to work. You know what? We'll run. Uh, uh, polls clear as well. We'll actually keep that. Oh, worms. Today I found an earthworm in one of my plants while changing the water. Very cute and I was happy. Oh, that's nice. Very wholesome. That's, that's the kind of stuff I want in my chat. Not this stuff about facts mattering more than feelings or something. Don't even have a fax machine. Okay, can you do this? Can you do this now? Let's see if this works. This is an exercise in futility because I've changed basically nothing except remove the poll FDs thing. Um, register poll FD's call. Driver not load. Oh, packet driver works. Okay. 
So htget google.com. It resolves it and it slurps some packets. Okay, so what are we going to do here? I think we're going to have to manually look at the output of poll. At least we're going to have to write a little bit of code that will add a trace for it. Not a Unix trace, but I just want to know when a poll happens, I want to know what file descriptors are ready. So, write some code if all polls i dot fd doesn't equals negative one um we're going to have to do if so if it if it if we have a file descriptor that has an actual event, we're just going to uh, log um, fd has event. That seems fine. I'm suspicious of this code here. I have to look into that. Let's just change that to, I guess, a zero for now. Okay. We'll look at that code in a second. Revents. This is really trash code, but it's fine. I'll, I'll fix it in post. It's not trash if it works, please don't say that. It sounds like something I would say. Okay, DOSBox, do your worst. No, wait, don't do your worst. So let's see. It doesn't, it's not saying there's any file descriptors ready. Are you kidding me? There's none ready at all. It should be saying that there are file descriptors ready. That's a worrying. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm a little bit confused here. It looks like Linux is saying that there's no file descriptors ready. Like um, there's, no, there's no, um, nothing to read from with sockets. which would be extremely confusing. Because obviously it has to. Come on, DOS. So we look at FD 10 and 11 and they don't have any events. So let's actually break at slurp tick and let's have a look next time uh, what happens. So we're going to clear the polls, fill the polls, and let's look at polls. Let's look at all polls. So it's not registering any, any events. 
or is it? Hmm. Let's look at this code that I thought was obviously correct. Okay, we're going to have to print a little bit over here and remove this code for a little bit. So when we add a poll, we, we want to write um, added, oops, slurp, added FD, I, 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 where it's FD, then events, then real events. <gasps> no, sorry, I thought I saw the bug. I didn't, I don't think. And then we're also just going to sanity check by printing what poll in is, what number that is. Because it might be zero, and if it's zero, I'm looking at nothing. I don't think it should be zero. That'd be really weird. You wouldn't be able to tell if you actually have any events waiting for you. Let's see, htget twitch.tv. So it adds file descriptors with various events and then zero, zero, zero. Okay. So, I missed a lot of that. I'll have to try that again. I got confused by just saying zero a lot and I wasn't actually paying attention. Don't be like me. Okay, so we're gonna start up. Um, HT get twitch.tv and then we're just gonna break as soon as we see some input. Okay. Added FD ten one twenty five one. So let's see, what does that mean? Yep, so those events look correct. So Hmm. Let's print um, the results of all file descriptors that have events regardless of the output. Are you typing uwu owo uwu owo in my chat? I hate it. It's cursed. All right, htget twitch.tv. FD10 has event zero. FD10 has event but there's no value returned. Are we never polling? I just don't understand. Unless I'm missing something with poll, the poll API, probably not.
But it looks to me like we're never actually getting any events. Like, it looks like polling is just saying that we don't have any events ever. I'm not even going to use DOSBox for this, uh, GDB for this, rather. I'll use DOSBox, but I'm not going to use DOSBox to run GDB. No, the other way around. I'm not going to use GDB to run DOSBox. Okay, so what do we see? FD1 has our event zero. So, FD1 has our event zero. FD1 has our event zero. And we only care about FD1, I guess. This is confusing. Okay. Let's see what happens when we do a DNS thing. So MTCP DNS test name twitch.tv. MTCP config equals C drive MTCP.config. Oh. I will learn how to set variables in DOS properly. So when we do a DNS thing, let's see, I'll put some spaces there. So when we do a DNS thing, we get a, it gives us a new packet and we send two packets and we get a new packet and both times we get a new packet, we interrupt. Then we send another packet. Then we have no return events. And then we get a new packet. And then that gives us an interrupt there. And then we keep getting new packets and we keep getting interrupts. Uh, something is going weird here. Um, slurping packet lang 69, please no. That's, that is a number. Okay. Oh. What if we set time out here? Is this what the issue is? It needs a specific timeout. And only that one will do. Because if that's the case, then I have a bit of a problem. Since this is running kind of during the program. And as you can see, it is slow when I do that. But let's just see. Let's see. Oh boy, this program is booting so slow. What code is it? Uh, poll FD's fill. So let's look at the slurp code for that and see what that does. Poll FD's fill. What does it do with timeout? Update timeout. Ah, uh, okay. So what if we change the timer for this to be, um, where do we run it? Poller. Add tick handler. We want to run that less often. Um, uh, 
I want to like say, I want to run this not as often. So here's what we're going to do. Hmm. Okay. Jukes, have fun. Are you having fun? Yes, I'm having fun. Um, last tick equals zero. Um, uh, this is a complicated situation. I just want to see if it works. Oh, Fridos, why? Okay, can we tick at a less often amount of time surely the timer can do that tick handler add tick handler is there a way to add another Tick handler. Source timer. Add tick handler. Gets called every time if one or more ticks. So a tick, I guess. What if we just add a quick counter and we only do it every X ticks? That seems like a really weird idea, but let's do it. Static int counter equals zero if counter right counter plus plus if counter is greater than a hundred then let's say um sorry if counter is less than a hundred then we will return otherwise we set counter equals to zero and it will start over next time that might be kind of a solution okay is this going to work every 100 ticks will that be faster ah uh, that seems to be a bit faster tolerable maybe you might have to change it to a thousand. Unless this is that, unless the QMU stuff is supposed to run asynchronously in a different thread. In that case, we got problems. because I don't want to write multi-threading code at the moment. It will hurt my soul. I'll have to check QMU's code. Um, let's see. Slurp poll FD's fill. See the the other thing I noticed with the VD slurp um, is that it ran in a separate thread. So it has a timeout there. I'm not sure. Uh, it is confusing to say the least, but let's just try this and identify if this is the issue. Do, do, do. It 
Doesn't look like it. Hmm. 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 Let's look at the slurp code again. Okay. So, slurp poll FDs poll. Sorry, it should be poll FDs fill. And we have appointed to a timeout. It goes through all the sockets. Slurp update timeout. What does that do? Is it an opaque value? Open timed out. I have a bit of a feeling that the actual solution here is to have timeout be static. But I'm not sure. Let's see, it gets timeout. Does timeout, does it ever actually read timeout? If we have a TCP timeout with slurp, timeout fast. Am I supposed to actually pass timeout to poll? What is timeout for? It's not telling me. All right, so let's see. We go to poll FD fills and what does it do with the timeout? It does nothing except update the timeout. And what does it do when it updates the timeout? It checks if it's less than or equal to timeout fast. Otherwise, it tries to see if it's like under a thousand or something. It, it sets the timeout to something under a thousand. So that sounds like it could actually be like, um, would poll work like that? Would poll just have timeouts, timeouts like that? What's timeout fast? Timeout fast is two milliseconds. Timeout default is a thousand. And timeout fast is two. So get DNS, oh sorry, that's, for, that's not the right thing. I'll set timeout to two. Ah, uh, this is confusing. We're gonna set it to zero. And see if that helps with my situation, because it should just pass that through. And we shouldn't need any uh, hacky stuff. So 
So it says minimum timeout or a thousand. So it's maxing out whatever timeout we pass. Like it's not just setting the timeout, it's maxing it out. So I think Slurp's allowing us to tune, uh, Slurp wants to tune the timeout that we use for our event handler. And if it's under timeout fast, it will just um, return. If it's under or equal to timeout fast. So maybe we should set it to just two milliseconds. I don't know, that might be way too long. Let's see. HD get twitch.tv. It resolves it, then it sends packets. Let me just double check that it's sending packets again. I don't want to be searching for it not getting packets. Um, it would be TCP and then port and TCP dot port equals 80. Um, and this is probably going to leak all my personal stuff. So one second. Okay, so if we actually stop this capture, you can see um, I think the destination here, I think Twitch is 151.102.2.167. I think the second part here is useless because I only saw the first three parts. So we'll just focus on the first three packets. So source um, is outgoing. That's a packet length of 74. Um, that might be changed and padded a bit. We should probably be looking at the, uh, I don't know, but that's um, transmission control packet. Does Jukes ever play what? And then we get, a response back, uh, starting the connection. And then we acknowledge that, but we're not actually sending any data. And then eventually the connection closes, I think. Yeah. So TCP times out here. What if I became a VTuber, please? So we have to find out why, well, we did look before and we did find out that it wasn't sending TCP because the connection was in the opening state. So let's check that again. Um, actually, let's just do that again. It, it would be TCP input. Let's try that. Let's break on TCP input when we're ready. I don't want to be a VTuber. Do I have to be? Uh, just run it first so we can set up the DNS and everything. Yeah, the DHCP. Okay, so break TCP input. Continue. The future is VTubing. No. All right. So a lot of things just happened. TCP input. Is that actually that might be um, when we get a packet. Let's 
I don't think that's what we want. Oh no, that is, that is, it is happening after we slurping a packet. So let's see. Um, list, let's go next, 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 next. See what happens. See why it is not sending it. Not gonna lie, I just said it a bunch to see if you say tube or tube and it's right on the edge. YouTube. Doesn't that make sense? I'm a, I'm a centrist, so I naturally, I kind of go in the middle of things. So look up, socket look up. So let's print our socket. Let's print the value of the socket. Okay, so that's a whole bunch of junk. Um, so the socket has a linked list. It has uh, a poll FDs index, which is the file descriptor in our case. Um, it has an F host. I don't know what that means. There's a lot of junk here. I don't know what an F host is. Um, let's see. We want to see so, so state. What's our socket state? Oh, it's two. What is two? Socket type. Okay, so let's go next. So the socket state is SS if connecting. So we're back here. So when it does the socket state, if it checks that it's connecting, if it looks and sees that the socket state is connecting, hang on, let's try and understand this code first. So when we run poll, it looks at all the sockets it has. So after we run poll, this should be like post poll. So after we've polled and updated our list of sockets and their uh, file descriptors and their values, it will then go through all the TCP sockets that it has open. And it will ask for the events associated with that. It will ask for the events, the return events. And then it will check through them. Okay, it looks through them. That seems fairly straightforward. And so if the socket state is connecting and it gets like, um, the ability to go out or if it gets um, check sockets for writing and if it can pull out like this it can output then it sets it to connecting then it removes the is connecting thing otherwise it goes so right so that's not being reset because poll isn't saying that there's an output that the socket is ready for writing. So why you be like that? Because, okay. So when it fills the sockets, it checks if the state is connecting. So we're actually going to break at that break slurp dot C line four, eight, eight. We want to see what happens there. We want to see if it actually adds, um, uh, 
it does add the poll. It asks it to add to poll for out. Just check if it's got an output. Okay, so let's jump into that function. And that just runs my slurp function. So events is 10, which is slurp poll out and slurp poll error. So let's print out current events. Wait, what? It shouldn't have a value already. Did I mess something up really bad and just not notice it? Slurp add poll. If real events and slurp poll in, events is poll in. Okay, so that might be that it's added 10 to it. Let's just print what the value of poll in is. So events is 10, what's the value of real events? Also 10. Is this me being bitten because I'm overriding a variable, an argument? Oh, I don't want that to be the case. Please don't make that the case. Um, let's events equals zero. No, let's just go through this. So it adds it to poll in, adds it to poll pry. Then we print the events. What? How did it get to zero? Wait, have I added code? Hang on, let's disassemble this. What? Okay, I'm, I'm confused. Info locals, what are our local variables? Real events is optimized out. All right, well, thanks optimizer. Thank you. Did I just write invalid C code? Oh, I might've written invalid C code. I don't know if you can legally edit. You should be able to, whatever. Let's just see if this works. Let's see if this code fixes it. I felt wrong when writing it, but I felt wrong with writing most of the C code. So I just thought it was fine. Okay, if I turn on double buffering, does that fix the actual everything all over the screen issue? All right, htgetgoogle.com. Nope, it does not fix it. Okay, so let's break at, I guess, add poll. Break slurp add poll if events isn't zero. Okay, so if we have events local, we have new events. What's our, what's our events? Our new events is zero. Something is happening here and it's hurting my head. I feel like I've really messed up here. Okay. Let's remove that. So let's actually just continue on and see what happens there. So info locals, we have real events, new events. I've edited the source code so it doesn't match up now. Let's step info locals, events is poll pre. It ends and it alls to the events because poll pre.
slurp poll pre. What is poll? Uh, I'm getting really confused by it. Slurp having two different things. Slurp poll pre. No symbol slurp poll pre in this console, in this current context. Okay, let's open up the slurp code. And let's just do this by hand. So I can see it with my lying eyes. I oh, know it should be libslurp.h that I'm looking at. Slurp poll pre is one, one, one to the power, one shifted uh, one. So that should be 10, I think, binary 10, which is two, correct. And that works out. So what is the value of poll pre? It's not going to tell us. The internet isn't going to tell us. That's okay. Slurp poll hub. Yeah. You need to really get into the Unix spirit when programming stuff. Okay, so. Something happened there and it still came out as zero. So here's my, here's my rule. Um, we're gonna add some code that says log message, big error if um, events doesn't equal zero. Wait, no. If events, hang on, wait. If events doesn't equal zero and new events is zero, we're gonna just log as a big error here and that will confirm that there's an error in the code. None of this means anything and it's amazing that it somehow works. I know, right? It means nothing to me either. Okay, so let's see if I'm famously bad at bit shifting. This should give us a lot of errors if I'm correct that I'm wrong and a lot of frustration if I'm wrong that I'm correct. What? All right. Um, ht get twitch.tv. Oh no. All right, all right, here we go, back to school. My code is not it is not shifting in values properly. So let's see. Back to school. So if I have the value zero and then I or it with one, I get one. If I have the value two and I or it with one, I get three. Bit shifting, you thought that word was gonna go somewhere else and I was ready for a ride. Mm. I'm really confused at this code. Okay, it seems that the impossible is happening. Unless poll in and poll pre, one of those is zero. But they shouldn't be. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to user include grep poll in. 
No, that's definitely one. Yeah, pollen should be one. So what we're going to do is just be confused at the code for a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to do if events Oh my head. All right. We're going to do this. We're going to debug through this and do it on paper. Cuz this is actually confusing me. I thought I was good at computers, but I guess not. I guess I guess this is it. I'm sorry everyone. I wasted everyone's time. Okay, control C. Wait, no, I didn't start that in GDB. Okay. Come on. No one is good as computer. They fully formed out of the void. Yeah. That's the feeling I get. So we are going to break at slurp add packet. Break slurp get packet, I believe. Or is it add packet? Add poll. Yeah, slurp add poll if events um, equals ten, uh, two. Wait, which event is poll in? Okay, so if events equals one. So we'll, we'll try and find a case where it just wants to know about input. It might want to know more though, I'm not sure. No. Okay, cat, you can go out. All right, so that breakpoint didn't work well. Break slurp add poll if events is not zero. No, okay. So our events is 10, that's two. So let's also print events. We want to find an events that has poll in it. Oh no, two, is that? Wait a second. Two is poll out, okay. I forgot to add a poll out handler. The code was working fine, but I forgot to add a poll out handler. Slurp was asking when it was okay to get to write output and my code just ignored it. Hooray, it works now. Let's open up links. It connects to links. Wow. Let's go to jukia.org. It works. Wow.
I spent an hour debugging code for no reason because I forgot to add a line of code. In fact, it might have been that I originally had it there, but I removed it when I was removing some other code. Ha 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 ha. Wow. I'm laughing inside, but also outside. Um. Okay. So let's have a look at what we have so far. Um, let's remove the new packet thing. There's some to do's, but I'm not going to worry about those at the moment. I might, I'm not sure. We need to slurp close as well to clean up. Yes, congratulations. Close down the slurps, boys. It's time to go. <laughs> okay. You, you got me. Okay, slurp close. What is the command to close slurp? To uh, free everything. Slurp, clean up. That's what we want. All right, just so what we're going to do is we're going to fix that last bug and we're going to throw this over to GitHub, I guess. I'm not sure if I should do that on the stream. I'll check how much time I have left. Um, but usually I like to clean up the commits a bit longer. And this stream was more about showing a proof of concept. Um, I can't, I can't GitHub it on this computer. I'm not logged into GitHub. Let's see, to do check file descriptor. Yeah, so I need to error check if I'm running out of file descriptors. And if I am, I don't know. We should, we should check what slurp does if we run out of file descriptors. Um, what does it think? Um, slurp add poll, add poll. So it just assumes that I can always add the poll. So we need some kind of actual error handling here. Uh, we need, I guess, to crash, I guess. How do you crash? How do we crash? Oh, I got to return. I got to remove all that junk too. There we go. Um, e exit. Bx panic. Should I use bx panic? You know what? We'll use BX panic. So we log the slurp error and if we run out of file descriptors, we'll just panic. Too many file descriptors. You know, we can just do log. Is it log message or log air? Log 
log CPU log air. Too many file descriptors. If FD um, greater than 256, then we're going to log that and I guess exit. I don't know, maybe, maybe we should clean up slurp instead. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. Like instead of crashing DOSBox, well, ideally this is a programmer error. Um, you know what? If we run out of file descriptors, we'll just clean up slurp and slurp tick can be relied on, uh, sorry, slurp tick will only run if slurp is actually enabled. And then we'll do slurp, um, setting up slurp. Yeah, I'll just leave that debug message there. So what's your favorite Sonic? Um, probably the Sonic in Sonic Adventure 2 or Sonic X. Do you have a favorite Sonic? Also, we want to try and figure out if clock get time is used anywhere else in um, in DOSBox. In case there's some kind of platform specific. Nope. Okay. I'm your favorite Sonic. Oh. <sighs> That's good. All right, so timer new. Does that assume that we run out of timers? Uh, I'll have to deal with error handling a bit later. For now, we'll just write, because it seems complicated. We're in some kind of code that well, it needs to be rewritten a lot. Okay, a little bit. You know what, we'll do polls add FD and we wanna mark some, sorry, I'm skipping over a bunch of stuff. I'll ignore that, find out a way to preserve these across polls clear thing. I'll just add, I'll leave it as it is now, actually, because it is intended for review and the code is quite messy. Let's enable IP version six. You know, all those DOS IP version six nodes. Well, you are going to be happy today. Um, And let's make this and then commit it to git. Um, if I can find it, source, desktop, DOS junk, DOS box X. My idea is that if I commit it to git and upload it to GitHub, um, I can actually ask and then know what the proper direction to go is for most of the cases I'm not sure about, such as configuration. 
and things like that. You played Daggerfall and DOSBox, it was pretty cool. Nice. All right. So we want to add that. We want to add the NE2000 thing. Actually, no, we want to reset something in it first. We want to remove that debug thing that I changed. So let's just git checkout P. No, no, yes, I want to remove that. Okay. And we want to git add source hardware any2000.cpp. And we want to add, I think it's configure.ac, right? Let's see what our patch looks like. Am I missing anything else? Let's just do a quick git diff. Slurp. Nope. Git branch, git checkout, b, whip. Slurp, git commit, m. Um, slurp test. Uh, please, please review. All right, so that's 200 lines of code to implement basically networking in DOSBox without having a packet filter and stuff installed. So we're gonna do nice make J1. And um, also we should probably just do a quick show off for the people from GitHub who want to know about this. So Kaz, are you ready? Um, I'm probably gonna cut part of the video off. Like not cut it off, but I'll select this section just as a to, as a show off for it. So okay, so the time is. Hello, GitHub and Twitch. Um, this is an example of my work in progress slurp patch. Um, as you can see, I've compiled my DOS box with the slurp patch. It's the same slurp patch as I'm sending at least in revision one. Um, and with my DOS box configuration, you can just see I have the NE2000 stuff enabled. And yes, my trash can is called rubbish. Someone just pointed that out in chat and is freaking out over it. It's okay. Um, I have not compiled with PCAP, uh, only my changes. I don't have PCAP installed, so I have not tested that part yet. Anyway, let's go to dosbox.configuration. I'm actually loading and booting a system in FreeDOS. So let's do that. Um, DOSBox X. No, please don't do this to me whenever people are watching. Install bin DOSBox conf, DOSBox conf dot X. Um, this loads up. Let's try and make this bigger. As you can see, um, we actually did load the Ethernet driver correctly. Um, up at the top, it says uh, interrupt number three, IO port 300, the packet driver is six. Um, just cut out the mistakes, it's fine, no. Anyway. I just had a total brain fart. You know what, I will cut it out. I will cut it. This is cut to diamond. It's cut. Okay, so now let's just try using the internet. Links uses what TCP. So what I'm actually gonna do is delete C drive FreeDOS bin, oops, what TCP? Or is it in FreeDOS what TCP? Oh, it's not there. 
Okay, so let's start links. And it works. All the standard libslurp stuff such as DHCP and friends are working. Um, you see I have an MTCP configuration file. Um, it has all the IPs and stuff in it, but I'm just gonna remove those just to get the packet imped. And then we're going to do MTCP DNS tests and we're going to name github.com. Oops, set MTCP config, we put CJIV MTCP.config. Netmask must be sent. How about you don't set that to me? Okay, we're gonna do MTCP's htget, github.com, httpgithub.com. Netmask must be set. No, I don't want that. Oh, it worked before. Oh, well, you know what? I don't have a netmask. So I just do, wait, set mtcp config, c drive mtcp config, packet int 0 times 60, do I write dhcp? Uh, I might have to delete mtcp.configuration. Okay, so let's try doing a resolution of github.com. Okay, well, I guess that's not working. Why? It worked before, I swear. That mask is a run kill. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That mask must be set. You know what, MTCP, you don't deserve this. As in the bad way, you don't deserve to have this. Let's do um, htget. Yep, that works. Um, that's really everything. It is what it is, unprivileged networking on DOSBox. Oh, it has a whole bunch of prints still. Um, yeah, it's fine. Okay, they're gone, they're gone. Everyone watching the video is gone, it's just us, Twitch. Uh, So I think that's finally my DOS networking problem solved, right? Because now I just actually use a network adapter in DOSBox. And it is fine and it works well. And I no longer have to deal with Slurp. And uh, if you watch my previous DOS vids, then you would know that Slurp is pain. The old slurp, not this slurp. And I think that's all I can take tonight. Um, so, see you later. Don't say rip slurp dabs, okay? Don't dab on slurp. Rip in peace.